So this video is part of a larger blog post that I put together for parents to understand melatonin and how melatonin may or may not be useful for their child's insomnia. Melatonin can be kind of a tricky medication to understand for multiple reasons, which I talk about on my blog. One of the hardest things to understand is the effect of timing. So first, to first understand why this is the case, we have to look at how mel when melatonin is made in the body. So essentially, during the day, you have, your melatonin level is essentially zero. And a few hours before bedtime, it rises up, it stays relatively high during the night, and then it drops off a few hours before bedtime. When it starts to rise, it's called the dim light melatonin onset. And you can detect this in blood, you can detect this in saliva. The reason this matters is in some young children with insomnia or difficulty falling asleep, and many teenagers, they may actually be trying to go to bed before they have their dim light melatonin onset. So their bedtime is too early, right here. They have a period of difficulty falling asleep till they eventually fall asleep a few hours after their dim light melatonin onset. Well, it seems really obvious. Well, why not just give melatonin? It'll help with this. The tricky thing is about melatonin is when you give it matters. So this curve right here is called the melatonin phase response curve. This sounds really confusing and difficult to understand, but I'm going to explain it to you. Essentially, if you give melatonin when the curve is above the dotted line, the effect is that you go to sleep early. You give it when the curve is below the dotted line, you'll go to sleep later. Notice the maximum effect if you fall asleep, say, from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. is if you give the melatonin four to six hours earlier. Compare that when people usually take melatonin, which is a relatively high dose, three milligrams, five milligrams, 10 milligrams, right before bedtime, it has a much smaller effect in terms of changing sleep-wake scheduling. You may be, that's fine. You may be trying to use the hypnotic effect or the effect where the medication makes you sleepy. However, if your goal is to move the sleep period earlier, it's much more effective to give a small dose around dinner time, 0.5 to one milligram. Now, Practically speaking, four to six hours before bedtime for little kids doesn't really work. So we say just give it dinner time for teenagers and little kids. If the goal is to fall asleep and to have the hypnotic effect, then you can use a higher dose of bedtime. Again, whenever using melatonin or any other medication, make sure you either consult your doctor or your child's doctor first. I want to just mention in passing that light has a similar but opposite effect. So note that light exposure in the early evening has a very strong effect on making you your melatonin get secreted later and making you fall asleep later. That's why it's so important to avoid bright light exposures in the late evening before you're trying to fall asleep. If you want more information on melatonin or other topics related to sleep in children and teenagers, you can find me at drcraigcanaperry.com or uh, on Twitter at drcanaperry.